Hi. In this video, I'd like to talk about section 4 of Joseph Pieper's essay, The Christian Idea of Man. At the end of the video, I'll stand up and show you the t-shirt I'm wearing. It's another one of my favorites. Section 4 is about justice, and it's only four pages long. Pieper's remarks on justice are relatively brief. We begin by noting that justice in some ways is the pinnacle of the virtues. Since justice is the virtue of living successfully in community, and we are social beings, we realize our perfection through our engagement with other people, justice would seem to be the, the top rank of the virtues, of the natural virtues anyway. And this is true in a way, but Pieper begins by noting that justice is deeply connected to prudence, because the just person needs to be objective, needs to have objective knowledge of his or her situation, of the social whole, of the reality in which uh, this person is engaged. So this deep prudential connection with the real is a precondition for justice. The person who is imprudent, the person who cannot achieve objectivity, is not able to be just. There's simply no way that person can achieve the virtue of justice. And he goes on to say, the good person is primarily just. We might think that this is reflected in the fact that we sometimes use the just man as a shorthand for the good man. Right? A good person, a person who is fully good, is just and realizes justice in his life. Now, justice is a collective as well as an individual virtue. In addition to talking about being just myself or he or she being just, we also talk about justice as a collective virtue of a whole society or of a group. Uh, the way Pieper puts it is that justice is a virtue of the we. There are three structural elements to justice. First, there is justice in the relationship between members of the we, between individual members, me and my neighbor, contracting for goods and services, exchanging things for money. This is commutative justice or justice in exchange. There is also justice in the relation of the whole, the social whole, to its individual members. We might think of this as a vertical justice in a descending direction. This is related to the sharing of goods. This is distributive justice, the justice of making sure that everyone has sufficient access to the common goods, that common goods are distributed in an appropriate way to all people. And then the third structural element in justice is the relationship of the members to the whole. This is vertical justice in an ascending direction. This is what is sometimes called legal justice, the way in which I am aware of and contribute to and have obligations to the common good. Now, Pieper notes that individualistic social theories look only at the first type of justice, as though all justice were commutative justice, and as though once I have ensured that all the exchanges within a certain group are done correctly according to legal principles, I have exhausted what justice is. There's nothing further to do. This is plainly a mistake. But Pieper also notes that there are some universalist or totalitarian regimes, remember he's writing in 1949, that deny the existence of commutative justice at all, which hold that there are no relations in justice between individuals as such, that individuals always relate to each other through the medium of the state, so that I don't contract with you in some just or unjust way as a private individual, I relate to you as a fellow member of the social whole of the Soviet or of the collective, the, the collective of which we're a part. And that is to say, this totalitarian or universalist regime would hold that the state is all. There are no, rela no just relations outside the state. All justice is the state's justice, and there is no private sphere. Recently, Pieper says, some Christian thinkers have tried to draw on classical theology to argue that the third form of justice, legal justice, is the true form of justice. And while it is true that this requires more attention in the modern age, Pieper sounds a skeptical note about it. He says that uh, according to Thomas Aquinas, legal justice is quite important, but it's also the case that all individual virtue is important for the common good. The common good cannot be realized if the individuals themselves who make up the collective are not virtuous individuals. And so legal justice is not going to be enough. I think what Pieper's pointing at here at the end of this part is that 
to realize justice, we have to have a just society made up of virtuous individuals, individuals who not only have the virtue of prudence, but many other virtues besides. So private vices within individuals in the collective are, is going to sabotage any attempt even at legal justice. And so our view of justice and our attempt our attempt to realize our view of virtue and our attempt to realize virtue is going to have to be more comprehensive than simply attending to achieving justice and its precondition of prudence. So that's all I have to say about part four. Um, the next section is titled Courage and the Fear of the Lord, and I'm very excited to talk about that. That video I will uh, publish next week. And as I promised, let me show you that my t-shirt. Uh, this is my t-shirt. It says, I have no shelf control. So this is my my bibliophile bookworm t-shirt. Um, it's one of my favorites, like I said. Um, so that's all I've got for you for right now. Thanks for watching today.